Hello YouTube, Most Wanted here, and I just wanted to show you guys a new um, setup that I'm thinking about doing in my uh, Let's Play or single player. Um, I Right now I have a couple of fuel engines that are running quarries, two sets of them, but what I'd like to do is combine the sets and then also use the fuel engines to run other machines in my base. But right now I've got a signal when the quarries are done to turn off the engines, so that really doesn't work. Uh, I was thinking about doing a uh, energy cell and having a gate tell the engines when the energy cell needs more energy. But then I thought, well, then it's going to gulp up some fuel, not quite complete a cycle, and then when it's needed again, it gulp up some more fuel. And if it doesn't complete the cycle then, so each cycle I, I send it... Uh, tell it to run it's going to waste a little bit of fuel and when you got 16 or 12 engines that are gulping up fuel and fuel's not the easiest thing in the game to make and it eventually runs out I, I don't want to waste the fuel so um, I've got this little setup it's, it's it's a different setup but you get the same idea so what we have here is this is representing a really basic uh, usage of MJ and then we've got just a this is a, just a pure buffer cell so that when this cell is completely empty we're still sending out energy reliably and then this is the cell that we're going to be charging and discharging so rather than having really short cycles where it's just going to top off a single cell we're going to let this cell do a full cycle we're going to let it discharge completely before we turn on our engines and then we're going to charge it completely until uh, it's completely full and this only really properly happens when our output is less than our energy generation, MJ generation. So if you think about this for your setup, then make sure you have more generation than you have output. Otherwise, this setup won't work too well. So we want to do complete charge and discharge cycles. I tried to do this with gates. I couldn't find a gate setup that would, um, with purely just gates, without any logic. Um, and I wanted to set it up so that it would send a pulse and and pulse until it was empty and I, I couldn't find a gate setup that would let me do that so this is what I've got here I've got two gates one of them will send an energy signal when the redstone uh, will send a redstone signal when when it's full and the other one will send it when it's empty right Okay, so right now, um, you could think of it as the engines ran until it was full. When it when it sent when it sent the signal out saying it was full, then what it did is it sent out a redstone signal that came out to here into our. Uh, this is a pulse former. This will take a long pulse and turn it into a short pulse. And the reason why I have pulse formers here is I don't want one to take over the input of the toggle for long periods of time or let's say we have gone to the discharge cycle we've discharged completely well then the engine will turn on but it'll still try to top off this one as well so it'll it'll um, you know it'll get a little bit of energy in so it'll no longer be full or empty and then it'll empty itself into this one which will send another pulse which will mess up our toggle here we want our toggle to always be on the right when um, we're full and em and left when we're empty. So we're in the full position because we just got done topping it off and now we're in a discharge phase so we're discharging it we don't want the engines to run. So when it's completely empty this gate will fire uh, a redstone signal and it'll go down to the pulse warmer and it'll send another pulse and that will flip this toggle to the left. So let, just, let me just show you how the toggle works. You just it's nothing but just a toggle switch uh, but with redstone um, uh, logic added to it so it'll only flip when it receives a pulse from one end so just so you can see it happen we're gonna go ahead and destroy this one and we're gonna put an empty one down which then you'll see that this toggle will flip you might if you're watching even see this pulse former run so there we go. So you saw the pulse former pulse a signal to the toggle and the toggle flipped and now the engines are receiving a redstone signal. They're set to run when they receive a signal 
and now we're charging the cell and we're going to continue to charge the cell because this one's now topped off because we're producing more than we're sending out this one got topped off pretty quickly and now we're charging this one steady steadily so um, that's pretty much the setup it will continue to run a full charge cycle charging the cell until the cell's full what you'll see is it'll toggle back over when the cell is full and we just charge back over uh, we flip the the toggle back over and the charge cycle is complete and now it's in discharge mode and it will completely discharge before it turns the engines back on again so that's it I'm just gonna call this uh, my charging circuit and um, that's about it of course your everything past this is gonna be whatever is on your um, conduit network that you're powering and then everything beyond here to the right is going to be your power system. What we're particularly interested in is the logic, the cells, and how the cells and logic are hooked up. Uh, there's one thing that I didn't mention. You want to make sure that your cells, especially this one, this one doesn't mind, doesn't matter quite as much because it's not going to be next to it. But if it is next to your, you know, your gates, make sure that uh, the redstone signal set to disable. You, we don't need to disable the cell. We want the cells just to charge and discharge naturally without being turned off. So make sure you turn your cells off, otherwise your gates will send signals and dis disable your um, cells. All right, and a, a disabled cell won't output, and we always want to be sending uh, energy out. So that's my that's my charging circuit. Um, it's most wanted here. Thanks for watching. If you had any questions or comments on the setup or any ideas how to improve it, then please leave some feedback. Otherwise, uh, if you thought this video was helpful or interesting, please like the video. Thanks.